did 49ers Kyle Shanahan just throw shade at Jimmy Garoppolo with his comment on KMBR about Brock Purdy? Let's take a look uh, a little bit further to see if that is the case. And let me tell you how this all started, shall we? So KMBR hosts Kyle Shanahan every week on their radio station and also their podcast network. And this particular quote was tweeted from their Twitter account on or X account, whatever you want to call it. Kyle Shanahan with Tolbert and Copes on why Brock Purdy's risk taking is a positive quote from Kyle Shanahan. I want a guy who gives us a chance to win the game, not a guy who is just hoping everyone else wins it for them. That's a pretty fair assessment of what you want in a quarterback and all those different types of things. But because of the 49ers history with Jimmy Garoppolo and kind of the way Jimmy Garoppolo played, he wasn't the most aggressive quarterback. You know, you guys know he checks it down a lot, all those different types of things. Take a look at the responses from this tweet. I mean, you can see 133 retweets. Uh, a lot of those are quote tweets. But just take a look at some of the responses right off the bat. We got our good friend Sourdough, Sa Sourdough Sam pulling up oh, old Jimmy tweets. <laughs> oh, we got the oh my gif. Uh, some, some Brock. Love it. We got some oof size large memes. Uh, Dinosaur says he don't got a subtweet Jimmy like that. Dave says Shanahan is Loki a savage. Jimmy G. So instantly instantly twitter is like this is a shot at jimmy garoppolo has to be there, there's no questions about it oh we even got some trey lance is this is apparently a shot at trey lance now um so as you can see um twitter's having fun with this uh but i would say let's listen to the audio on KMBR. Before we make our grand proclamations, let's listen to it right here and then let's react to it on the other side. Uh, let me ask you about uh, um, uh, that first throw, that, the first touchdown throw that Purdy made. I know you said it was maybe one of the worst decisions he's made since he had been here. And, you know, when I watched it, I was like, ooh, there's a lot of people there. And then it got over and obviously IU caught the ball. I came at it from this angle, though, and I don't know if it's, you know, you'll buy this or not, but at least he has the guts to, to to throw that like he has the guts to do that like he believes in himself to do that like i think the last thing you want steve young always mentions it he says that like inside the uh, 20 to 20 is like numbers and this and that. he goes but inside the 20 you got to be kind of an artist you got to you got to figure out ways to get the ball in the end zone and you don't do that by being safe and checking it down checking it down checking it down sometimes you got to take some chances that may have been too uh, what well, was it was too high risk but I'd rather have somebody who's a little too high risk than a guy who is risk adverse. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I want a guy who gives us a chance to win the game. Um, not a guy who's just hoping everyone else wins it for him. It's, I mean, that's where you want it to start. But, um, you know, I am not worried at all about Brock not being that guy. Like, yeah. Brock makes plays. He lets it rip. He's done that since the first game he got in in Miami halfway through, and he's done it every game since. So, um, Brock, we have zero concerns about that. Um, Brock sometimes, when if we're down to stuff, he's not going to take what's given because he's going to do whatever he can to make plays to get us back in. So, like, he's everything you want in that aspect. Um, but what's cool about Brock is he does see things. He is um, – he has that poise. He can't talk to you when he comes to the sidelines, and he knows when it's a bad play too. Yeah. And that one, to me, wasn't as much of <laughs> it's kind of there. It's like, what the hell are you doing that isn't there? Oh, my God, we are the luckiest people ever. <laughs> and that's, to me, what was a little bit bothersome about it. But, yeah. um, you know, he doesn't have too many of those, but he makes yeah. a lot that are kind of there. And he doesn't sit there and think about it all. He doesn't hesitate. He will let it rip, and um, we expect that from him because he's so consistent with it. That one was just a little bit different, but like I said to him after I got all my words out of the way, I said, oh, and by the way, thank you very much for the touchdown. We love touchdowns. <laughs> um, I mean, that's that's great. If I was a fan, I'd buy his jersey after the play. But you just know um, that's not going to last too long if you do too many of those, and, um, and he doesn't do too many.
Yeah. What What was he trying to do? Because he said he was trying to fake him out by, you know, getting his head one way or, like, trying to get the DBs to think he was going one way and the wide receivers were supposed to pick up – or well, Ayuk and Kittle were supposed to pick up on it. Uh, they didn't pick yeah. up on it, so everybody ended up in the same area. And I think he got – where he, I thought he got lucky, uh, Kyle, was – the the defender I forgot who it was that was between him and Kittle he didn't really get a good jump off because he was with Kittle so he couldn't get up as high as he would have liked to I'm sure and it just barely went over his fingertips but what what was he trying to do that didn't really come to fruition well what you, we're supposed to just disperse the field a little bit better than that on a keeper yeah. and um, both guys uncovered into the same spot so both went to an off schedule before you were supposed to and one guy was supposed to keep going and then whether it was one guy Kittle uncovering or BA uncovering he was trying to get one guy to do it and he tried to fake running towards the line of scrimmage hoping they would all come up to get him and then stop assuming that one would uncover and be wide open well they both uncovered and neither were open Um, and he just committed to it and made it happen where it's first down and when you get the edge on a bootleg like that and no one's there the first thing you look to do is you run and you get it because no one's coming up to stop him either he just faked run he faked like he was going to do that assuming everyone would come up and then he thought he'd pop up and throw it to one person alone there just happened to be two people there who were also covered so he kind of got stuck in it what he hoped happened didn't happen and then he just said screw it I'm letting it go and (laughs) um, he ended up being right so again when you listen to it like I can see how the quote in context without him like understanding like what the question was and just kind of hearing it or seeing it like that yeah, it does kind of feel like a shot at Jimmy Garoppolo because, let's face it, Jimmy had a lot of ups, but he also had a lot of downs with the San Francisco 49ers. And, you know, 49er fans feel a certain type of way about Jimmy and Jimmy's time with the team. And so when you see it without context, yeah, it does kind of look like maybe some shade uh, at Jimmy. But when you listen to the question that Tolbert posed, and then you listen to the answer from Kyle Shanahan, I don't think it was necessarily shade at Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't think it had anything to do with Jimmy Garoppolo or really any other quarterback for that matter. It really did just feel like this is what we want. Brock has that and opposed to what we don't want. Um, We would much rather have Brock Purdy take shots, take chances, put put himself in a position to win games and do that himself and not let other people do it for him, Um, which is exactly the way Brock Purdy plays. Uh, He he really does put this offense on his shoulders and drives him down the field. So two things. I definitely understand why it could look like Kyle Shanahan is throwing some shade at Jimmy Garoppolo when you just read the text and kind of and the setup and I don't think that's any fault to KMBR or anything like that again we have our as 49er fans we are a fan base filled with PTSD from all different types of situations and in recent memory Jimmy Garoppolo is a part uh of a lot of that and so we're still We're still getting used to life with Brock Purdy. We're still getting used to life with a quarterback that will take chances, that will escape the pocket, will push the ball downfield. We're still still getting used to it, right? So I can understand some of the responses based on reading it in text. I think after listening to it, definitely don't think he was taking shots at Jimmy, just kind of stating facts like this is what we want, this is what we don't want. But still, nonetheless, it's hilarious that some of the responses that we've seen on Twitter, it's crazy. Crazy life as a 49er fan. But uh, it's a great interview. uh, Kyle Shanahan actually goes into full detail about uh, Christian McCaffrey's record and what the thought process was going into trying to get him the record. Uh, definitely should check out the full in- interview. I got the link in the description uh, from KMBR. Make sure you go there and you listen to the full interview. It's definitely worth a listen. But what do you guys think of this whole situation of Kyle shading Jimmy Garoppolo? Is he shading Jimmy Garoppolo? Is this just matter-of-fact statement? 
Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates.